Yes, Shalom, Chabarim, Shalom. This is Ras Ayadonis Tafar. This is Yadin, Yadin Ben Chayil here, LOJ, the Lion of Judah Society here. This intelligence about the intel, the intel of the Almighty. So we're going to ask this question right here, here, here. How can the majority, not all, not all, not all, but many, there's a lot of ones who are like artists, reggae artists, and some of them, you know, have, have voices of angels. Some of the relics, especially since the whole setback, you know, back from like you get to the 80s and everything when the whole kind of dance hall on a certain level, the, 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 the lyrics, you know, supposed to be the king's music, reggae is supposed to be the king's music, but some of the, the, the lyrics, you know, are not really relics. But the question is, how can some of these reggae artists be called prophets? when they don't know the scripture now anyone can be called a prophet maybe they are maybe they're not you know if one to say they're a prophet they got a prophecy well let's hear the prophecy let's hear what it is you know according to what the scripture even especially among the rastas and rastafari since we're saying rasta and rastafari and that's attached to katamali hala selassie and hala selassie the first the conquering line of the tribe of judah what he says what he says what, what our namesake as rastafari says he says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. So the question here, here, here is how can many of these, you know, not all, not all, not all. It's not all. It's not all. Because there are those Rastafari, you could say reggae artists who will be considered to be reggae musical artists. There are many of them who do know the scripture, but a lot of them don't really get the, how can I say, the, um, the respect my musically, you know, like the martyr of Vaughn Benjamin, right? AKA Midnight, AKA AK Becca. You know what I mean? There seems to be kind of like a blackout, so to speak, on their music in certain places. The people who seek the truth, right? The real King's music, they find it, they, they, they know it. You know, and I got a testimony for one of my nine brethren, Heal Up to the International Chaplain for the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, duly elected, yes. Um, I and I, Brother Ross Seymour, give thanks, brother, because, you know, we had a reason, man. I mean, he actually has known the brother Vaughn Benjamin and, and witnessed certain things, you know, witnessed the hypocrisy. You know, we have to first clean our house. You know what I mean? They say charity or love begins at home. They say open rebuke is better than secret love. And this is sort of an open rebuke, so to speak. But just a reasonment here. You know, how can ones and ones say that they are prophets and then say they are Rasta or Rastafari and they don't know the Bible? Because if Haile Selassie I, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the king of kings of Ethiopia, elect of God, this is the official title. One of his official titles is not Lord of Lords. It's just a, just a point right there. It's a point, just according to the evidence, the facts. Remember L.O.J., the line of Judah, Society of His Divine Majesty. We are an intelligence, an information society, intelligence. We're about getting that, look at the information, you know, also checking out what the disinformation is, you know, breaking it down and building up on the truth, right? Building up on what the truth is, what can be substantiated, what can be verified, what can be referenced, you know, and allowing the people, you know, to find the truth and decide on the truth for themselves, you know, we don't go about proselytizing, you know, and L.O.J. Society of His Majesty, the line of Judah Society, we are non-denominational and we are not affiliated, right? If you understand the terms and conditions of the words that we speak, we're not affiliated with any other Rasta group, you know, we're not affiliated. Yes, many of our brethren, they are brethren, yes, but if they're in their own camps, they're under their own banner. We're under the banner of the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. You're over. So the question here is how can many of these reggae artists be prophets and they didn't know the scripture? In other words, how can the Rasta reggae artists, right, be called prophets and they don't know the scripture? Right? We could ask the question, well, how can they truly be given glory to his majesty as it is claimed, as it is said? You know what I mean? You know, because ones and ones, most ones and ones don't really know about, you, you could say, Ethiopia or Haile Selassie as the Rastafari from Groundation. You know, basically, it's because of us that even His Majesty's name, right, for better or for worse, is spoken of. 
right? And His Majesty, Kadamawi Hala Selassie, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, is being evil spoken of, not just by the so-called enemies or others, or even some of the, some of the Israelites, the latter-day ain't right Israelites, some of the camps, but most of the disinformation that they get, they're getting, right, either from, you know, the pseudo, you know, reggae and pseudo king's music. I say pseudo because if it's not giving the truth, if it's not preaching and proclaiming the truth, right, if one is not speaking the real prophecies, right, concerning we of the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews after the order of Melchizedek, Chesedic. If they're not speaking the truth concerning we, the black Jews, of the lion of the tribe of Judah, we're getting to the roots. I'm talking about what the roots is. You know, some might say this and that. I don't want to get into some of those details right here because this is this is a kind of a, a an expanding point. But the heart of the matter is that if we say Rasta, right? Well, first of all, if you say Rasta, that's like that's what the world calls us Rasta. We're supposed to be in the fullness. The fullness is Rastafari, Rastafari, right? We're the first, one of the first to really say to the world, but mainly to the brethren first, you know, first to the Jew, right? First to the Rastafari, those who claim to be Rastafari, that Rastafari does not mean head creator. And we had to, over the years, just break it down and build it up, go into the, the language and the simple text to say Ras means head, Ras. Right? As we've in Hebrew, Rosh, Rosh, right? Rosh, Ras means head, and Teferi means the one to be feared, the one to be reverenced, the one to be respected. It's a very interesting scriptural, biblical revelation, even in the name. Right? It's about the name, right? And how about Nati Drela and the Amharic? What about the Amharic? Right? So when we came forward, right, when we were called, when we received that call, many are called, few are chosen. Right. We were Israelites. We are Israelites, but we were, you know, rolling with the Israelites, you know. So therefore, you know, certain of those groundation biblical things. But even before that, we went into the Bible, the scriptures. But we have to, you know, just speak the truth that, you know, with the Israelites. Uh, we mentioned this before, even Captain Azania from from One West, ISUPK, on Brother Lawrence Davis is what you know about God and his chosen people. We just laid that down right there, you know, over sense. And. This is what line of Judah, even from the very beginning, when we began as one of the first, um, I guess you call Hebrew, <laughs> the first Israelite, <laughs> first Ethiopian Hebrew fraternities, you know, yes, yeah, a fraternity of brotherhood, right? And Zion daughters, daughters of Zion sorority back in BC. We talk about, we, we, we go way back to BC, Brooklyn College days, you know what I mean? And this is back in the, what was it, around 80, 1989, 89, um, yeah, all around that time, you know, when we really first came forward to really proclaim, you know, the truth that we had received, right? But now as we see how things have gone on and on and a lot of the commercialism, schism, you know, a lot of that being in the world and becoming just of the world, you know, and I mentioned this right here because of a couple of um, news feeds we like to share right here. Now, this brother right here does a very good one. Let's see if we can find this. Okay, here's how it actually, here's how it actually began right here. We had saw this right here, right? This, this right here. Now, this is something, this is Junior Reed. It's something fairly recent, right? And he's being interviewed here, right? Um, special guest, Junior Reed. Um, I know Reed panel uh, and, and panel and it says you can't compare Bob Marley with Hala Selassie, you know, so he basically gives um, his philosophy. I want to save that for another video, you know, a Junior Reed's Rasta philosophy, right? But at the same time, as we was getting this info here, right, this is part of this right here, right? Okay, let's, let's part of this right there. Let's go over here. Let's find a screen still. I want to share the brother's um, chant. Don't we have him fully full right here? I want to, want to share this brother's, the brother's thing right here. Hold on for a quick moment, brothers and sisters. Hold on right here. Hold on. All right, all right. So here, 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 here. Here's the brother's video right here. All right, here's, here's his video right here. Just full screen so you can see this brother. And he's, so it's regarding Junior Reed meets the Israelites in Toronto. I don't know if you've seen that some years ago. Right, 
Junior Reed buck up upon some Israelites in Toronto. I think they might be a GMS group, Great Milestone group, and hail up to them. Shalom, shalom to them. And they were asking him some questions, right? <laughs> I, I laugh right here because I'm just thinking about this, right? It's not funny, but it says that, you know, Adonai, Adonai, he laughs, you know, you know, because he has the enemies in derision, right? And so many ones and ones just went against the Israelites because they went against Junior Reed. And yes, I like some of his tunes and his songs too and all that, right? But this is Rastafari Groundation. We got to get the groundation. So here, yeah, this is the re-upload right here. Um, reggae artiste, Junior Reed, he meets the Israelites in Toronto. So you can see it was a re-upload, a re-upload, right? And I remember when the first video came out some years ago, right? I think it was GMS, it probably was the same Israelites in Toronto or elsewhere. They might have had it up there and, you know, a lot of channels got pulled for different reasons and everything. So this is a re-upload. I'm really happy to give thanks for re-uploading it. I think I saved it a couple of years ago. And initially, you know, initially we went to, you know, it was a, it was a Rastafari thing. It was like a Rasta thing. Like, yo, how you go against this Rasta brethren? But then as I listened to, you know, the, 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 the reasoning, because Rasta man, the eldest. See, what I want to say to the, many of the other Israelites, you know, the other Israelites of different camps, it, it wasn't like this in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like this in the beginning. What I'm saying by in the beginning, right, when we go back to, say, even the, the 30s and the 20s, right, and even back to the teens, when we, most ones are not even proclaiming the true roots. When we say Rastafari, Rastafari, those who identify, right, that Hala Selassie, you know, the line of the tribe of Judah, and have this, we could say, a messianic link. Whether you agree or disagree, right, it goes earlier, right to a roots that is not just say benjamin or jamaican right but you know benjamin you know we can those of you who know the scripture you know what we mean when we say you know benjamin right you know benjamin you know benjamin right we we could go to need we go to judges right or we go to the root that Benj, benjamin little old jamaica right it says benjamin psalm 68 you know, talk about there is, you know, the council of Yehuda, of Judah, so-called North American Negro, and also the true light, the true light of Rastafari, Hala Selassie, shine among I and I here in this North country. But that history, my, that history is, is, is like buried. That history is, is suppressed, right? Is even downpressed. So what we get right here is a kind of like a reggae-matic thing. It's like become a reggae thing. And then we get a lot of artists that are called prophets or are called themselves the prophets, right? Yet, they don't know the scripture. And the brother that we just showed right here, over here, in this particular still right here, right? He makes a good point about it, right? He makes a very good point in his video. And his video right here is um, Junior Reed, regarding Junior Reed meets the... Israelites in Toronto. So I, I point all this out so ones can go and look at it for themselves. Right? And I was surprised. Some of them was, one was I think of 7 to 11 years ago. Another one was a little while ago. And they didn't get really many views, maybe because people already saw it before or what have you. Right? But some of y'all I know probably haven't even seen it. Right? There's a few of y'all that probably haven't even seen these videos. So we took the time to just back up these videos because it's important as we speak on these things and also teach on these things we, got, we need to use these as object lessons right and even the junior reed situation he has an object lesson right i would have thought right <laughs> he would have learned something in a sense from that encounter with the israelites in fact when i first heard about it i was like wow people say oh you, you see how the the israelites like it was like disrespecting junior reed blah 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 and then when i checked it out for myself i said actually i agree in principle with the Israelites because first of all they're speaking about the Bible and the Bible is important to our namesake as Rastafari first and foremost so this would be a whole different this should be a whole different sort of a reasoning or conversation with our fellow Israelites because they are fellow this is the common denominator right they're under the the ban on the camp you know whatever the ban on camp that they're under but the core curriculum is Israelites the root of Rastafari going back a hundred years ago to the Roaring Twenties, right, was that we are Israelites. It was the whole Ethiopian, Hebrew, and an Israelite movement, 
right? This is, this is the real roots of even the One West groups as we trace it to where did this consciousness of being Hebrews and Israelites, not saying when this brother or that brother, this captain, or that captain, you know, got in the truth, when they got to know the truth, right? But this truth we know was already in dissemination, was already in revelation, was already being preached, right? Preaching, my right? This gospel of the kingdom, this gospel of who we are as the once lost, now found black and brown sheep of the Bait Yisrael, the Beta Israel, right? Or the Bata Yasharallah, as some would say, right? So this brother, he made a very good point, right? And the point that I want to say that he made, he made some other points as well, but one very good point that I touch on, I don't know your brother, I don't know your name or whatnot like that. And this is, you know, this is no disrespect, Shalawam, you know, to the eye right here, but he makes a very good point and how he makes the point, right? He basically says it, right? Straight to the point. He says, how can they be prophets, right? And they don't know the scripture, right? And then when I listen to the Junior Reed um, encounter, right? Even when I listen to this one here, this one right here is a trip. I don't want to even get into this one. All I'm calling about this one right here is Junior Reed's. I call this, um, we call this Junior Reed's um, Rasta philosophy, right? WTF, what do you think? Do you agree? Something like that, we're going we're gonna to call it like that. Do you agree? Right, but stay stay tuned for the content thereof. Right, so here's here's this video right here. Right, five hours ago, maybe six, seven now, when we took the screenshot, and he says you can't compare Bob Marley with Hollis Elias. Now there's some things that we do agree with in what he says. So it's not everything that he says that we disagree with. But there's some fundamentals, right, that seems to be purposely being ignored. You know what I mean? Even those Rastafari reggae artists, like even the ones like Vaughn Benjamin. Some of you might never know who, who I mean. Some of y'all do, some of y'all might not. Midnight, the artist Midnight. Ake Becker, right? Uh, adopted name Ake Becker, right? But brother Vaughn Benjamin, right? There's also other artists we can point to who, based on their music, right? And listening to their music. Right and paying attention. This is what really separates Bob Marley. Like just to even speak about Bob Marley for a moment right here. Right to speak about Bob Marley, where he said you can't compare Bob Marley to Hollis Selassie. Okay, agreed. But even one thing that made Bob Marley very unique, and I want to speak to my Israelite brothers that if we really would just separate for a moment, right, this point about okay, you are what your father is, and the whole allegation of his father being a white man, and so forth and so on, and he's not an Israelite, and all these other things that I said. And we really listen to the message and the pro-black message, you know, and that real, how can you say, you know, that preaching of um, even the Bible, right? Because you have to recognize Bob Marley in his tunes, right? Now, some people may, may listen to this tune or that tune, but in his tunes, even Buffalo Soldier in the Heart of America, he's speaking to us as Judahites, Right? And he recognized us as Judahites. And he recognized we as Israelites. Yes, his theology, Bob Marley's theology, you know, which also we share in principle. Right? Of course, many of the Israelites, many of the nowadays, is, when I say nowadays, I'm talking about like 70 AD, 1970 AD and beyond. Because that's what you see in the One West, One West, ISUPK, you know, General Johanna, and some of the other camps that have broken off from there. You know, like the Israelites of Toronto, I think they're under the GMS, and there's other, there's Sakari, there's many of the different. In my father's house, there are many mansions. You know, if it wasn't so, then he wouldn't have told it to us. But then when we heard him make a mention right here, there's a very interesting philosophy that he has. Like I said, I do not seek to put this we we'll want to reason on on this video this video stay tuned hopefully we can share some words and reasonings on it and just ask whether ones agree or disagree what you think about it you know in other words they say crowdsourcing right well we're using the resource of the community you know reason on this hey check this video out so we even given ones a time and opportunity to check it out for themselves before we even say this or say that about it but some of these previous videos Right, some of the previous videos, like okay, like for example, over here, this this is the still on it. Right, this is Junior Reed and Beyonce. Right, Junior Reed and Beyonce right here. I guess they're singing and performing something. Right, and not to even get into the whole Beyonce sort of a thing. Right, but reggae artist Junior Reed, he meets the Israelites in Toronto. Now, in this particular clip here, right, where he meets the Israelites in Toronto, there's a part of it. Where he's talking about Ja, right? Ja Rastafari, and he's—I think he—he's—he's he's 
quoting a portion, a part of a script or whatnot like that. And he said something about John Rastafari. And one of the, one of the brothers asked him, um, where did the J come from? <laughs> you know, where did the J come from? And he said, the J came from Ja. And I just had to pause it. I said, oh, please stop. The J came from Ja. Oh, wow. Because what they was getting to the Ya, right? That there was no J, you know, in English and, and, and the development of the J in the English language and how there's no J, right? We could say in the biblical or archaic Hebrew, there's no J there. There's no J sound. There's no letter, you know, J, right? Therefore, Ja would be Ya. But then we also, as Rastafari, would say, Aya, 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 Ya, Ya. We say Ya too. Right? We may not be conscious, but if you really listen, right, even the way we say ja, right, not the emphasis on the J part, but it's emphasis on the ya part. Ja. Aya. When we say aya, right? Aya, aya. Listen to aya, 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 ya. Ya is there. Right? But that besides that point right there, let's get forward to the scriptures again. Because the scripture says something right here that we'd like to share with you right here. Let's pause this right here because we don't want to do this particular vlog right here. You know, and not have some scripture right here. What scripture should we go to brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers? Um, right, um, to the law. Let's put the word law and to the testimony. Because we know that his imperial majesty, our namesake, Adamawi Hala Selassie, will agree. While it's interesting, today's daily psalm, brothers and sisters, according to the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews. See, that's the discipline that Rastafari once had, but we're seeing this discipline, this discipleship and discipline, once again, caught up in a lot of the accessories. You know, having the locks, you know, and maybe changing, you know, your diet, you know, your live it, you know, like what you eat, you know, to, to more organic, more, more healthy food. That All that is good. You know, it's like, brother... Paulos, Paul, Rabbi Shaul, brother, a.k.a. the Apostle Paul, right, where he talks about, like, our exercise, you know, it profits somewhat, it profits a little, you know, exercise, you know, like physical exercise, so not against those things, but some people will exercise their body, but not exercise their spirit, not exercise their soul, right, you know, it's here, Psalm 19, verse 7, the law, the law is the what is the Torah, this, these are basic things. When I start to look into the archive of Rastafari over the past, say, hundred or so years, the earliest I get to the, 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 the first proclamation of Rastafari, we could say the beginning of the proclamation of the good news, we could say, of Rastafari, of the King Messiah, right? The ones who say Christ in his kingly character, or the Messiah in his kingly character, right? You know, Revelation, you know, five and five. Oh, how about this? Um, Psalm 87 and four. Right. With Ethiopia, this man was born there. But the earliest that we go into the evidence of the archives, like back into the 30s, right, even even the 50s, 40s, 30s and 20s. Right. And even the teens, the latter part of the teens, we get proclamation. Right. We get proclamation. This is what makes Lion of Judah, the Lion of Judah society, right, as a. When we say a Rastafari mansion, or, or we can say even as a camp, different from the other camps. So we focus on the, on the intelligence, right? On the intel, right? The wisdom of the scriptures, right? To the law, right? The law, the Torah, right? The Bible, the glory of his majesty. And now there's a big debate among some ones and ones saying that, oh, you know, when they see such, when they see they are reaping what they sow. Right? When we talk about Shashimani, we talk about the Bingi house, we talk about this or that, it, it comes down to these basic principles, these basic precepts. That if we had really, it's like what, what, what Christ says that, like, in vain, in vain do they worship me. Right? In vain do they worship me. Right? Teaching precepts of men. You know, this man over here, that man over there. And then they say, well, this man, right? This man is God. <laughs> Right? But yet, what this man is telling us, they don't listen to what this man is telling us, or they find all sort of feel out softly philosoph philosophical ways to reason around it. And then, you know, as the scripture says, you know, John, <laughs> yeah, you know, will give us up, right? You know, you know, he, he gave us up to our own ways. You know what I mean? We, we even have that psalm, right? That was a psalm, Psalm 81. Right, you know, he left them to their own ways, right? And then we see the fruits, 
right? A lot of the, the sad news that we hear among Rasta this or Rasta that, a lot of it comes back to these first precepts, right? And this ministry has been ministering the same first principles of the oracles of God. And the first principles is the scripts. The first principles is the, is the scripture. The teaching of his majesty, right, right, is to read the Bible and study the Bible to know the truth for ourselves, the truth for yourself. So we as Rastafari, right, who say what we say, right, then when we see and we bear witness that that is not what's being proclaimed in the public, and then when certain ones or other Israelites start to take the task ones and ones and say, oh, Rasta is fake or Rasta they on all this stuff and it's not about this and that and how the Selassie is this and that. And we say, oh, look at them. They're haters. But who's the real hater? Hail up to Sister um, Soldier, right? Understand this song. If you, if you get a chance to look it up, I think it's a sister named Soldier understand this i think it's a dis psalm it's psalm 37 psalm 37 sister soldier i really listen to that tune that's a that's a see it's those kind of tunes we we um rate as rastafari as king's music right but there's a lot of this that is going on that's not worthy of it they're not worthy of the name, right? Should not even be put in the category. We're talking about reggae. Reggae was, and reggae, it was meant to be the king's music. And as even Burhana Selassie, a.k.a. Bob Marley said, right? The only purpose of reggae music, right, you know, is, is that, that message of Rastafari, the truth about Rastafari, of, of the king of kings, of, of prophecy, right? That's why we, when we look into some of the classic roots reggae, right? You'll notice that even it, some of you might not know that some of the artists, the older artists are speaking uh, the Bible and Torah are going to the scripts because you don't know that those are scripture. Some of you might think, oh, that's just a, a, a Rasta thing. But actually, it's the scripture. They're giving real glory to the king because they're going to the king's glory according to what the king of kings says. And if we say the king of kings is God, then we should listen to his word first and foremostly, not associate him with other, you could say, leading brethren amongst us, whether it's Marcus Garvey or it is um, Priest Emmanuel. Now, I have some good brethren who are Bobo Shanti, and we might have this reasoning. So it's no disrespect to the one who has told them the truth, like speaking to some Israelites, right? Like One Westers, right? ISUPK is Israeli school, Israelite school of universal practical knowledge. And what many of them acknowledge is that they came into the truth, right, in, at One West, right? And they give credit to General Yohanna. Now, you know, I'm not getting into all those, like, um, 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 in a mansion, <laughs> you know, kind of quabbles and so forth and so on. That doesn't concern. That's not the main thing because in my father's house is about our father's house. It's about our common denominator. But let's get to this verse right here since this is today's daily psalm. Very, very interesting. I'm going to try to put this up before the podcast. Check out our podcast, right, um, on the Rastafari Israelites, the Rastafari Israelites, on the YouTube, so also one can call in like 10 to 1, uh, well actually 10, 10 to, to midnight actually because the last hour you know you have to be called in but then you could check out the Rastafari Israelites on the YouTubes you can call in 515-602-9761 that's 515-602-9761 so here this psalm right here this th today's daily psalm according to the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews when we say that we are just linking with our heritage. We're not neglecting or casting behind us our heritage. We're linking with our righteous ancestors, with the righteous patriarchs and even the righteous matriarchs from, from before, right? Those who first proclaim it. What a lot of ones are trying to do with Rasta Farai is like a remix, a modern nowadays remix. And for the most part, it's garbage. It's, it's, it's not the truth. Right? So many of us, when we hear one speaking against Rastafari, we might think like they're speaking against us, right? you know, individually, or those of us who know the truth and proclaim the truth. But just think about it. How often do we have to encounter a fellow Rasta or Rastafari and have to go through a lot of these misconceptions that ones and ones have? You know? So first thing we need to do right, is we need to clean up our house. As I said, that judgment must first begin at the house of God. So the beta Rastafari, we got to check ourselves. The elders taught us open rebuke is better than secret love. Right? But a lot of undue softness has crept in. 
right? I would say this undue softness is somehow in the mid 90s as we approach the 2000. But we could say from the 2000, the undue softness, where ones and ones are kind of like overly, overly um, weak hearted, right? To rebuke or weak hearted to receive a rebuke. But yet the elders taught us from the scripts that open rebuke is better than secret love. We say, you know, open, you know, correction is better than secret affection. Psalm 19 verse 7 says the law of the Lord, right? The law, the Torah of Yahweh, right? Of Jehovah, Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be the name, is sure, making what? Wise, the simple. Now, from the roots of Rastafari, I always spoke about wisma. We, they may say wisma instead of saying wisdom, right? Because looking at dumb in the word wisdom, you know, on that kind of level right there, so called picking sense out nonsense. But it seems like ones are non sensing the sense of the matter. So we have to go back to the basics. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Because ones want to argue you on the Lord and all of that. Right? They want to argue in that. But what is it saying? It's saying that the Torah, right? So the Torah is important. Well, it does what? It converts the soul. It does what to the soul? Shoo, right? It, it returns, it turns back to the soul, right? We could even ask the question, you know, in some areas of Rasta and Rastafari, it's like ones that have lost their soul. Really, the real soul of Rastafari, the real soul of Rastafari was about those basic precepts that we find many of the latter day Israelites about. Right, this is what's so shocking. Some of y'all might not be that sense old enough. Right? And nothing against the youths, because we know that the youths in many areas were chosen where the elders or the older were forsaken, even in this Torah reading and feeding we're at right now. For what, the 37th degree of the sabbatical study? You know, for, for, for this Torah reading and feeding. <laughs> Shalach, Lika. Right? Shalach, Lika. Right? Send for yourself. This is when they send the... Um, 12 spies into the land, right? You know, and 10 of them bring back lies, right? Right? And two of them had the two report, but they were outnumbered, huh? They were outnumbered. Sounds like what happened with Shashimani, right? The Shashimani land grant, where some Rastas want to say that it was given to Rasta, but it was actually given to we, the black people of the world, through the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. I mean, the long and short of it, people want to point the finger here and there at this one and everything, but it comes down to the same basics that the, the Israelites, that we as Israelites and our ancestors end up in captivity, because we broke the covenant, plain and simple, right? We didn't obey his laws, statutes, and commandments, plain and simple. Plain and simple. And we have the opportunity, even when we're in the land of our enemies, right, to confess, right, and to forsake that, right? Confess and forsake that, you know? Let it go, right? And he is merciful. And we can move forward, onward and upward. But no, ones want to continue to play this kind of game. Don't want to, you know, like, 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 like they, they perfect, <laughs> right? They perfect. But you know what's perfect? It's the law of Jehovah is perfect. Both we saw the law, first and foremost, in his glory book. Hala Selassie say, for my part, I glory in the Bible. Hala Selassie says, the advice to all, right, is to fulfill the Ten Commandments. Yeah, some of them want to be pushing up in your face the 42 negative confessions of Ma'at. Like, that's where the Ten Commandments came from. They don't even know the difference between a confession and a commandment. Come on now. A confession is not a commandment. Okay, I confess to you. Sometimes I might lose my cool with my brothers and, right, and my sisters. Is that a law? Is that a law? Is there anything that says you are to do this or you are not to do something? You can just hear me and say, hey, well, well whatever. I do too. So what? You know, I, that don't happen to me. So what? You know what I mean? Just keep it moving. All right. So, so uh, this is where the screwy stuff comes in. Someone go back to 10,000 BC and you're flying past the mark. Right? You're flying past the runway. That's why you're going to crash. Right? The runway is this prophecy, this Judeo Coptic Judeo Christian prophecy, right? Concerning we, the once lost now found, concerning the Israelites of Ethiopia, concerning we, the Israelites of Beta Israel of the West, right? And the Beta Israel scatters to the four corners, right? Of this earthly plane. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about, right? It's the gospel of the kingdom, right? The gospel of the kingdom. So the law of Jehovah is perfect, converting, 
converting, returning the soul, returning the psyche. Because once they, oh, look what's happening in Rastafari. You know, we used to, remember back in the days, you know, once are now nostalgic. You know what, once on, on that nostalgia? Because that means we're not still doing the first principles. If we was doing the first principles and precepts, then that nostalgia would be our present reality. So we wouldn't be all nostalgic. We would be living in that present reality. But something, something, something happened somewhere, somewhere it went off the rails, right? Things was derailed, right? It's a, it's a part of the COINTELPRO. It's a, it's a spiritual COINTELPRO, Aguan, right? The testimony of Jehovah is sure, right? So Yahuwah, right? He who be, who he be. Hank Adosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem. So for the Rastafari, we say his imperial magic. And Amari Hala Salasi, weep not behold. So it's his testimony. So what's his testimony? For my part, I glory in the Bible. And so you, you hear a lot of Rastas will be putting down the Bible because they don't know the Bible. Right? Or because their pre-existing condition, they had some trauma. Maybe they had a mother like you. You all have seen that movie Carrie? You remember that Carrie movie? They're all gonna laugh at you. They're all gonna laugh at you. You remember that movie, right? Where where Carrie's mother was this this this, this white racist religious fanatic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and that's what happened. You know, so some ones and ones see all of us didn't have the same experience. Some people may have had a, a really traumatizing experience with the Bible and with counterfeit Christianity and white Jesusism, schisms, and all that. Granted. So it's, it's not so easy for them, right, in, in that sense, right, because maybe they were beat side the head, you know, with some fundamentalist counterfeit Christian, you know, Christianity, right? I think we all were affected more or less, but there's some who might have been affected a little bit more, you know, from some of the stories I heard from the Benjamites in the Caribbean, you know, in the Caribbean and Jamaica, some of the brethren and even sisters have told us certain things about some of their religious fanaticism, you know, believing in that white Jesus and everything. I, I, I get it. I, I do get it. Right. You know, what I mean, it's like Archbishop Yitzhak says in his book and brothers and sisters, you got to get that book, Ethiopian to Wahido, you know, Ethiopian to Wahido Church. Right? You have to get that book. Definitely have to get that book. But right here, here, here. Let's go to Psalm 78 and five. It says, for he established a testimony in Yaakov, in Jacob. And appointed a law, a Torah, is this the word Torah? Right, Torah, right, in Yisrael, a law, direction, instruction. The Orit, in the Ethiopic, in the Royal Amharic, in Hala Selassie's Bible, the Book of the Seven Seals, it's the Orit, Torah, Orit. We study the linguistics, we find that, wow, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a common root. We have common roots, right? Hebrew is an Afro-Asiatic, Afro-Shemitic language, the language of the King of Kings. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 10 and 11 from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia would turn to us a pure language the Amharic language the son of Negus and Negus is also a Afro Asiatic Afro Shemitic language it's a Creole it's an ancient Creole I just want to point that out to show how the roots is one my appointed a law in Yisrael which he commanded our fathers our patriarchs that they should make them known to their children so that's the problem Maybe some of the patriarchs, some of the fathers. You know, it's interesting as even we get, you know, older in this five cycle incarnation, you know, in the flesh. That's what it means, in the flesh, incarnal, in, in the flesh. You know, one sometimes look up to I and I, some of the youths, and hail up to the youths, to, to the Rasta babies. Right? This is for the Rasta babies, the Rastafari youths, you know, the babies also just coming forward. Right? Because when we see all the confusion out there in social media, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's like, it's like social media turned into whole Babylon <laughs> in and of itself. But it says that he appointed this Torah, right, in Yisrael, right, that he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. You, check this out. The coronation of his majesty, you hear many Rastas talk about the coronation of his majesty. On that very day, the 72 nation and that prophecy in, in Enoch that speaks about the 72 nations, right? The different nations, right? Um, did you know that one of the titles is King of Israel? But one of the titles, one of the titles that's not a title of Hala Selassie is Lord of Lords. But one of the titles that is a title of Hala Selassie is King of Kings of Ethiopia and King of Israel, King of Israel. 
So whether some of the other Hebrews and Israelites of the other camps agree with that, we already know how, you know, their subjective response, their collective subjectivity, they're on this collective subjectivity, you know, but we know, we're confident that they will recognize the truth, you know, as we speak the truth and as the truth reveals itself to be the truth, right? He commanded our fathers. Who's our fathers? Our patriarchs. Remember what the Torah says? The Ten Commandments. So we as Rastafari, can big up the Ten Commandments because Halat Salase, our namesake, bigs up the Ten Commandments. But now, how many other Rastas do you hear bigging that up? Do I hear crickets? Come on now. I hope I don't hear crickets. All right. So the Ten Commandments, the Ten Words say, it says that he would visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. You know how you hate Kedemawe Hala Selase? Those of you who claim to be Rasta, I and I brothers and, and sisters, right? It's when you want to hate now because we're talking about the Ten Commandments, the Ten Words, the Esaret Barim, and we say that this is the teaching of His Majesty, right? Y'all should be pro proclaiming that message with us, right? Putting that up on your social media. But what, the, what you do, you still, you know, promote a lot of this stuff that appeals to your feelings, that psych out your soul. Right? Remember the other verse? The psych out your soul. One's souls are psyched out. Right? Ones have voices of angels and relics of demons. Right? Have voices of angels, you know, angelic voices. But you start to look at the relics and the relics are found wanting. Right? Wanty wanty. Wanty wanty. Too enough. Too much. Too enough enough. Too much of it is going on, brothers and sisters. Right? He commanded our fathers, our patriarchs. We can look at the same thing amongst us as we the black people, the Beta Israel diaspora, even those who might not identify themselves as or consider as Rasta, Rasta Far right here. Our fathers, our patriarchs, we're going back to our fathers, even our fathers over here in this North Country. Going back to our fathers, our forefathers, the commandment keepers, congregation of the living God, right? Ones like Rabbi Arnold Josiah Ford. He was one of the first to actually go over there, right, to Ethiopia, right? Ones that his majesty sent us, Dr. Malaku Emmanuel. That's I and I, LOJ Society. Our Emmanuel is Dr. Malaku Emmanuel. Well, our Emmanuel is Yeshua HaMoshiach. Let's make that very clear, right? Right? Because if you understand the real divinity, Right, you know, we we are in that divinity. That's what Tawahido is about, but not because you say it out your mouth. <laughs> For he established a testimony, right, in Jacob, and appointed a Torah in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, our patriarchs, both our ancient patriarchs. We say Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, the Hebrew patriarchal triunity, Trinity. That's our Trinity triunity there, right, coming from the Hebrew roots. Right? And appointed a law in Israel that he commanded our fathers. He commanded our fathers. He commanded our patriarchs, our fathers. That means he commanded the elders. Rasta babies, are you listening? He commanded the elders. Right? The elders, right? Basically they are brothers, but the scripts say that we should regard, you know, the older brethren, you know, treat them like fathers and the older sisters, the sistren, like mothers. Right, that he commanded our fathers, the elders, that they should make them known to their children. Right? So who's the children? If they're the Rastafari elders. What are the Rastafari elders making known to the Rasta babies, the Rastafari children? What, what are they making known to us, huh? And those who are musical too. Right, you know, we're just going forth from that point. But here's here's the here's the verse that we was directly going to, but you know, the Barak of Yahweh. Hallelujah, right? Yeshaya, Yeshayahu, Isaiah 8 and 16. Bind up the testimony, right? Seal the law. Seal what? The law. Let's find this word is Torah. This word is Torah. It's Torah. Look what it says, Torah. Direction, instruction. Direction, instruction. Human or divine. If you know about Tawahidah, then you know in Yeshua that human and divine is made one, right? The human and divine. Right? That human divine. So the Torah, the scripture, the Bible, let's call that the divine. Right? The teaching of his majesty. Let's call that the human. But notice that the human divine is one. For my, my advice to all. He was asked about his advice to young people of this time. And he said, my advice to all is to fulfill the Ten Commandments. Right? The body of prophetic teaching. 
So how can ones be calling themselves prophets or reggae, reggae prophets? How can you be a reggae prophet and then you don't know the Bible? You don't know the scripts, right? How can that be? That's a boom point right there. And then to see the responses to the video, like a lot of ones didn't really want to like pick up on that, right? Because they, they, they know they're moving their guilty. It's my like, like Adam Wahewan, right? You know how they cover themselves with leaves and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Right? The instruction in messianic age. Uh-oh. If we say his majesty is Christ in his kingly character, so Christ equals we have found the Messiah, the Mashiach, right? Which is being interpreted as Christos, the anointed. Right? And he was anointed and crowned that day, November 2nd. 72 nations bend the knee, bow. Bow to this black man making Israelite claims. The scripture also links I and I. Are you not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me? Ethiopia, for Ethiopia, this man was born there. Yes, and it also says, Ye Ethiopians also shall be slain by my sword. Question, Israelites, what's the sword of Yahweh? Yahweh, what's the sword? What's the sword? It's the word. We could go to the scripts. Right to the law, right? The the body of priestly direction or instruction, the body of legal directives, lawful directives. And then notice in the secondary sense, it's talking about burnt offerings and those kind of things. You know, special, you know, all those kind of things. Right? See, people like to point to that. Hot the fire, keep the fire burning, the altar fire burning, and we priest, yeah? Right? But let's go to the groundation, the precepts, what be the first principles, right? And the first principles of the oracle, the oracle, the word, sound, and power of Yahweh, of Jehovah, is HaTorah. And specifically, it is the mitzvah, the mitzvah. The mitzvah is the commandment called the ten words, the Esret debarim, right? So there it says seal. You see what it says seal? We talk about seal up, seal up. Ones don't even recognize what the seal of. They're talking about seal up, and they're talking about something like Ziploc or something like that. You talking about Ziploc? You talking about Ziploc? Right? Oh, you talking the real seal? Right? Khatam. The Khatam. Seal. Affix a seal. Fasten. Fasten it. Lock it up. Seal it up. Seal up what? Seal up the Torah among my disciples. Right? That's what you talk about discipleship. Right? Rastafari discipleship. Rastafari groundation. Discipleship. Right? Not playing those games with gimmicks and stuff with our people. There's not no gimmicks. Right? This is this is this is this is life or death. So he put before us two ways. Life, right, or death. He says, choose life. So therefore we have to bind up the testimony. Right? And seal the law. Seal the Torah. Seal the direction instructions among my disciples. Right? The the, the disciples. Right? Limudai, Limudai, Limud, Limudai, also the Talmud. We have the word Talmud in the Hebrew. And what's a disciple? A one who's taught. Some of y'all are too proud, right? You're too proud. Mm -hmm. Or some of y'all is caught up on tribalism, right? Because you say we are Yankee and, and you are Yadi, right? We are, we are Judahite and you are Benjamite, right? Where it says Yehuda Yikdem, right? Judah first. You don't check, right? Taught, learned, disciplined taught accustomed to something right that's why we go through the Torah readings and feedings in Shabua from Shabua to Shabua Shabua is the seven is the strong right from week to week right but we keep it sabbatically strong right to so become accustomed to it so we can grow in grace and that knowledge of the King of Kings Christ Isis Isis Jesus Iusus right Yeshua HaMoshiach right here 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 instructed being instructed. This is what you notice. A lot of them have to give you, you ask them some question, they give you some philosophy. They give you something that you laugh at. That's what that's what uh Junior Reed did in that um that clip we alluded to. You know, the thing that the clip that we're gonna call our response to that is Junior Reed's Rasta philosophy. Right? Not the teaching of his majesty, not the teaching of Hala Selassie. It, it, it wasn't it wasn't none of that right there. I think even in the clip I think he talked about the battle of Ottawa. Like Hala Selassie was in the battle of Ottawa. I said, wait, hold on for a moment. The battle of Ottawa? Right? I mean, yes, he was very young at that time, but he wasn't in the battle of Ottawa. The battle of Ottawa, 1896. Right? He said to be born 1892. Right? In Jasa Gora, Ethiopia. That's where we connect the prophecy of Psalm 87, verse 4. With Ethiopia, this man was born there. Right? Instructed, accustomed, disciplined, learned, taught, used. 
right? Like something you're used to, right? So most of this Torah teaching, right, seems like something that is 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 difficult. People are like, oh, 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 are we Jewish? Jewish? Bob Marley told you that he's the line of the tribe of Judah. We're talking about the tribe of Judah, right? We're talking about the tribe of Judah. So that must be Jew. That must be Jew. That must be the true Jew. Let's put it like that. That that must be the true Jew, the true Jewish. That's the root right there. Right? Even the other Jews, they don't talk about the tribe. Right? Not in that sense. Or the tribe. That's why there's so much, you know, racist and racial kind of contention and problems. Right? Because they make it seem like, well, well, they really believe in the book, then why are you running all this why offense racism? Right against the root people, since you're the wild olives that have been grafted in. Right, we are the natural branches that have been broken off. Now he's grafting us in again in this time of this awakening, this Israelite right awakening, right Valley of the Dry Bones awakening, right to learn, teach, exercise in, learn, teach, taught, be trained, learn, teach, taught, right. Just to show you what the words right there mean. This is the studies, right? The study to show yourself approved. Right? You see many mind of mine be running around, they not have no books, so everybody's like some guru or something like that. Well, the guru thing is not our order. I just want to point that out. That guru thing is not our order. Mystically, we see a lot of comparison, a lot of truths we agree with, but we have our own order, just like the guru thing have their own order. That's why some of the Israelites, like, here love Captain Azania, you know, who was going through that, talking about the dreadlocks, he's talking about, oh, that came from India, and I guess this is what a lot of people are pushing. A lot of people are pushing this out there. And that's not the teaching of his majesty. That's not the true teaching, right? That is like blasphemy, right? That's blasphemy to the truth of Rastafari. That's blasphemy, man. Kick, kick, kick rocks. Kick rocks on that. They didn't even mention the Bahitawi of Ethiopia. Ain't that something? We saw something that Muta had something about, about Rastafarians and Hala Selassie and how you reject the dreadlocks. We, you think this is a hair, a hierarchy? No, this is about a divine hierarchy. There's not no hierarchy. It's about the father and son. Right? <laughs> and the father and sons. Right? Let's go to Yeshaya, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20. What does it say right there? It says, to the law. What? Mm. Do we have to click on that for you to know it's Torah? We'll click on that so you can know it's Torah. Right? And Torah is what? Is the BDB, Browns, Drivers, Briggs. It's the, the law, direction, instruction. Right? Instruction in messianic age. Right? The messianic age. So we claim Christ in his kingly character. Then did you know we're in the messianic age? Right? To the law and to the testimony. Right? To the law and to the what? The testimony. Remember all of these references from the glory of his majesty, the glory of Hala Selassie. Hala Selassie speaks this. And I'm saying this mainly to the Rasta and the Rasta Farai, but especially to the Rasta babies. They need to understand this truth. Because this is the real truth from the first proclaimers, from the true elders, from the very beginning, from the very beginning. Right? And I want the Israelites to also understand this right here. Doesn't mean we agree on the theological aspects, right, concerning his majesty, because there's still ones are holding to the, the whole Zondervan. Right, the zone of van counterfeit, counterfeit concordance. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we look into the history, we see the whole Negro connection. The whole Negro connection. Right? In fact, let's see if we can just show you that's right here. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Look at this right here. A hundred amazing facts about the Negro. See, this is this is the half of the story that they're suppressing from our people. This is this is from our our fathers, our forefathers, I say our Israelite, right? Our Hebrew, our Israelite, our Ethiopian Hebrew and Israelite forefathers going all the way back to the twenties and before, but especially in like the teens and the twenties. This book here by J. A. Rogers, a hundred amazing facts about the who, the Negro. So the Negro connection and Ethiopia is an ancient connection. But the Zondervan Bible Dictionary is giving a false impression and misdirection on that. And a lot of Israelites are investing a lot in that when it's not factually right and accurate. It's not. It's not factually right and accurate. So amongst the, amongst the Ethiopians, the children of the Ethiopians, we have the Shemitic, the Semitic, and we have the Cushitic or the Hamitic. Let's just point that out. Right? And there's a blend of that. That's what with the language, we talk about Hebrew being an Afro-Shemitic language. 
right? And this might be above some of ones and ones among some of the Israelites. You might dismiss this, but just take a note of it, brothers and sisters, because you're going to find out this is true. And hopefully you'll find it out before it's too late. You know what I mean? And these are some of the books that he did, the author from Superman to Man, Sex and Race, right? And a lot of this backs up a lot of other true Hebrew and Israelite teaching. And we talk about how we rule through Europe, how there's the black nobility and the black monarchies throughout Europe and explains the black heads that we see. They're also called the Ethiopian heads, right? So Ethiopia, black equals Negro. That's the ancient, right? That's this ancient proof and fact of that. Yes, if we go all the way back to Kush, right? Way back when, according to the earlier books of the scripture, you know, with the Ham, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, before they, you know, spread all over the earth. But it's, we act like they were not family. They were still family. Mm -hmm. And some family move other family. So we see witnesses of the, the, the Afro, which is the, the Ham, and the Semitic, which is the Shem connection. And we have that proof in the language, in the very roots of the language. This is beyond, how can I say, um, dismissing because it goes against a certain aspect of doctrine and teaching that was all based on certain references, like the Zona Van Bible Dictionary. See, this, this is a, a more complete video than we even, we're just going to touch on that one point, right, about how can the Rasta, you know, reggae, how can the Rasta reggae, um, um, uh, you, know, you know, be prophets? How can, how can the, the reggae Rasta artists be prophets and don't know the scripture, right? How can you be a prophet and not know the scripture? Hey, Rasta, how can you be a prophet and not know the scripture, right? Plain and simple. Because we want to get the attention of our people, especially the youths, the next generation. Because we already know from studying the Exodus, right, and studying the Torah, that those who he brought out of Egypt, right, they kept, they kept, they kept backsliding. And backsliding in many ways that we can point to directly, right, even in the, the 12 spies and the 12 pioneer settlers and the 10 and the 2, right, division right there. Right, someone's know what we mean by that, but we're going to that more full of full. Here we're looking at Queen Zodi too. Zodi too, right? She's a daughter of our people, right? Ethiopian Hebrew people. We, we need to recognize, right? And there was a whole, this is what a lot of the um, things that's going on now, um, a lot of the tribalism that we're hearing about in Ethiopia is all about, right? This is all, all that it's, it's all about, for real. People don't even recognize. This is where a lot of the godless and creeping coup against Haile Selassie was all about, right? That love of us over here, right? Israel in the West, Right, they're making way for us as well, and because his connection, Halasasi connection, is of Shem. Right, the Kevin Negev speaks all about the Shem connection right there, you know, and it's so controversial right now. I mean, people are actually dying over this. I mean, there's hot warfare and a lot of tribalism over this truth, and the only ones that can bring a balance to this equation right here, right, for the kingdom's sake, is us, even the Beta Israel of the West. Right? You know what I mean? And also the Rastafari that know the truth. Right? Because maybe some of the Ethiopians, because of all that has gone, the careless Ethiopians, let's point it out. Right? So we hear about what has happened from 75 even to the present time. You can chuck that all under Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 12, brothers and sisters. So when the Israelites hit you with that, you say, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. And that's what's been going on. Right? That's what's been going on. Right, sense of rebellion against the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. That's what's been going on. Right? That verse there explains it right there. Rastaman spoke about the careless Ethiopian. Jacob Killer Miller had the tune. Right? Careless Ethiopians. Other artists had that tune. Right? And see, those artists there knew the scripture. Listen to the Jacob Miller tune. Brothers and sisters, listen to the Jacob Miller tune, careless Ethiopians. And try to get the lyrics or, you know, listen to the what he's saying, the words. Right? And he goes into the, the, the prophecies. Right? He's alluding to many of the prophecies. That showed that was important to the mind them. Right? That was the basic groundation of Rastafari. You know, that was the very groundation of us. Now you hear ones and ones going against that because basically many of them may have put on a pair of dreadlocks or whatever else like that. You know, put on some dreadlocks or maybe eat eye town, you know, go check out reggae shows, wear red, gold, and green. All those are accessories. Those are outer things. Those outer things. We're talking about the inner thing. See, see, the, the king of kings can see those inner things. 
right? The, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth can see those inner things. The Spirit of the God Father can see those inner things. Elohim Ha'av can see those inner things. That's what, that's what it's about right there. So I wanted to just share the whole Negro connection, right? And in spite of what ones may say about Bob Marley and, you know, one of the commenters on the Rastafari Jews channel talk about, oh, you know, Bob Marley, a white man got all these Rastas going such and such. Nah, 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 nah. Think about it for a moment. If the Rastafari of today was more into the scripture and Bible like the Rastafari of yesterday, including Bob Marley, it would be a whole different reality. Right, and a lot of the setbacks that we're facing as a community is because of that. Just like with the Israelites, it's an example of who we are. It, it basically proves that Rastafari, especially ethnic black Rastafari at its root, is Israelite. It proves it. It proves it because we can see in the earlier days who was talking these things about we being Israelites before 17, 1970 AD. It was Rastafari, right? It was the Rastafari, it was the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews. Right? And those are those who, if we are affiliated in any sense, right? if any so-called denomination or mansion right, is a mansion that we can call home, it's those mansions there. Right? Speaking about the commandment keepers, congregation of the living God. Because their doctrine, their teaching. You know what I'm saying? Because their doctrine, the teaching. Give us the teaching of his majesty. What does his majesty teach us? You see what I'm saying? So it's like the Israelites when they came out of Egypt. There was the, the, the Israelites, the, 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 the children of Yaakov, Yisrael, Yasharala, and then there was a mixed multitude. So there's a lot of mixed multitude. And when I say mixed multitude, I'm not even looking at just other nationalities and races. Because some of them, when you start to proclaim the true teaching of his majesty, they get it. They get it. Right? In fact, they, they expect that. I was looking at an Israelite um, video, and these two white girls had come up, and they pulled out their Bibles. Oh, man, and it got bloody. You know, it's like they went into, but the, even the white girls that tried to um, approach or reproach the, the Hebrew, the black Hebrew, the, the Hebrew Israelite brothers, right? The first thing that, that happened is that they went to the Bible, right? And then if you look at some of the clips from the Israelites when they encounter and confront certain Rastas and Rastafari that's out there, whatever like that, they be going to the Bible and then some of the Rastas be dismissing the Bible, but be talking all this Selassie I think. I said, wait, hold on for a moment. Selassie I put some respect on the name. My Haile Selassie the first or Kedemawi Haile Selassie. Our namesake says, for my part I glory in the Bible. You dismiss that? Right? And, and all the other teachings that he gives us in points of reference to the Bible, that might be one of the reason why when he said what he said, you know, about how he spoke to certain rosters, not to make the mistake in pretending or assuming that man is emanated, right, from a deity. Because when you go get away from the Bible, you go into all these other strange philosophies. So when some of the Israelites be saying what they be saying, right, rightly and honestly, right, we cannot disagree with that because we know that's true, right? We know that's true, right? Some of those things they're saying. Right now, concerning his majesty, well, they don't know the truth of that. But the pre reason why they don't know the truth of that is because many Rastafari are not proclaiming, have not learned, have not discipled and disciplined themselves in the truth of that. That they can't even go to the scripts. Mm -hmm. that, that they even understand, some of them might not even understand the whole perspective that the, that the Hebrew Israelites are coming from. And what the Hebrew Israelites are coming from in their whole basic perspective goes back to the royal order, the commandment keepers, congregation of the living God. I, the, the royal order I, of the Ethiopian Hebrews going back to ones like Rabbi Arnold Josiah Ford Rabbi Wentworth Arthur Matthew others and yes we will proclaim them you know because we hear some ones and ones out there among the black conscious ones they're trying to now go into the history because they're trying to undermine right like one west so they're actually bringing out the roots that even one west don't really even deal with they don't want really to deal with those roots. They deal with 70 AD because that's when, you know, when those men came into the truth, that's what's important. You know, from a subjective perspective, yeah. You know, your testimony is your testimony. We get that. But the testimony of our history is bigger than my personal testimony and your personal testimony. We have the bigger testimony of our history, right? So it's about the scripts. It's about the Bible, right? It's about the scripts. Is it just about the Bible? No. You know, ones will say, well, His Majesty talk about secular education. He talk about secular education, right? Well, yeah, but first he talks about a groundation. He even gives his own example of his own life, his upbringing, right? First getting a groundation in the scriptures, in the faith, 
right? And then adding to the faith of the knowledge. But y'all got it backward. Y'all have the worldly stuff. And then when you try to add any Bible stuff, it's like a big confusion because you're not really accustomed to it. You're not in that discipline. As that's what Matthew says, a discipline of the mind is a basic ingredient of, of genuine morality and therefore spiritual strength. That discipline of the mind. You know, some mind of mine can't take this. We go through the Bible, the scripture. You know, it's, it's like, you know, and you would have to pray. You really have to pray that, that Abba Father, and we pray Abba Father, you know, Elohim Ha'ab, you know, gives you, you know, repentance, like a change of mind, right? So you can, you know, deliver yourself out of the sneer, right, of Diablos, of the lies. The lies, the lies against the King of Kings. This is firstly and foremost to my Rastafari brother, the lies against the King of Kings. Like dismissing the importance, the role of that. You know, if we can't keep God's law, the Jah law, then even if we have something like the Federation and there's a constitution and bylaws, this is why there's all the confusions amongst ones and ones. Well, not amongst everybody, but amongst some ones and ones, right? Because not all, not all, not all, right? A lot of what we're saying here doesn't apply to, to many Rastafari, especially of this generation now. We see the youths are more interested, right, in getting the truth. While the elders, some of the elders, I don't know, you know, I guess the elders got to speak for themselves and some elders have spoken up, right? And I'll just leave it as that. I, I don't want to speak for them on that particular level. But right here, here, here. So, yeah, Rastafari, Hasid, <laughs> right? Yes, I, yes, I, Rastafari, you know what I mean? So, here, 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 right? Have to get to our roots, you know, and now even ones will say, well, look, he's studying some white Jewish stuff. See, that's, that's, that's how limited your knowledge is. So where did they get it from? All right? So where did the white, the European Jews get it from? Uh -huh. Since the white Jews, the European Jews, and the most scholarly of them have admitted in some scholarly research and papers that when the European Ashkenazi Jews came into it or adopted, you could say, Judaism, so forth and so on, as the faith of their people, the majority of their people, that was like 740 A.D., 740 A.D., right? As Bob Marley even said, Burhan Selassie said, 3,000 years of history you can't wipe away so easily. And that's, and that's the good news right there, even the good news of the kingdom. is 3,000 years of history. That means if this is 2022, right, we're going all the way back to like, like, like 1,000 at least. Right? Actually, we can trace it more so. We actually say, say about 3,600 years. We add another 600 plus years to that, right? Based on the biblical narrative and the historical facts to really show the, we could say that Ethiopian Hebrew connection, right? And we're not speaking about two nationalities in that sense, right? Because to be Hebrew is our spirituality. Now, Israel, Israel is who we are. Israel's our identity, who we are, right? We still are in that birth of a nation process. The ministry that the different camps and I and I is doing is all a part of the gospel of the kingdom, right? It's building the kingdom. That kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? It's, it's building it up. Okay, here, here's where it goes. See, they, they use this Zondervan dictionary. This Zondervan dictionary is not very reliable. Mm -hmm. This Zondervan dictionary is from a biased white perspective. And sadly, a lot of pro-black, you could say, one men and women who consider themselves Israelites have bought into this. That's why I showed you the Negro over there, because that book goes back to the 20s and the 10s. And then we can have other historical and concordances that basically break it down. We even showed before, I got to take a snapshot of that again, um, where in the old Webster's Dictionary, it identifies that with that Afro, that Hamido, Shemitic connection, that Shemito Hamitic connection. It was there when we was in Egypt. Look at Moshe, right? Moses and the Ethiopian wife. Now I know Captain Azania and I don't know if this is ISUPK doctrine, but the ISUPK he said he said, Well Moses like he didn't know what he was doing. Like 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 he was basically acting like he, he was siding with Miriam. <laughs> on a level. It, it was a good it was a good something that's up there on um, Anchor FM. Look for what you know about God and his chosen people. Anybody interested in that, hopefully can, you know, still find that out there. Right there, there, there. Right? Like, yeah. Right? So, we have this connection right here. You see the map over here. Right? Well, if we would have needed to get into the historical facts right here, Ethiopia and the ancient Arabia and Yemen. 
right? Ancient Arabia and Yemen and the kingdom of Sheba, of Saba, and that whole connection right there. Like who's who, right? Like who's who, right? Who's who? Even they had this book, Niger. It was from one of our videos. I give thanks. Whoever compiled this is a very good compilation. And so we save these here because we like to go into a little bit more, right? The whole nigger, Niger, Negro, right? And it's interesting because he was called Niger, right? He was called that, right? And he was an Israelite, you know what I mean? He was called that. The Ethiopians, right? They have the Negro, right? right? And they also, you know, the whole Negro connection basically is referring to us as black people. But we know that the Shem, the Shemitic connection is there. Right, that Shemitic connection is there. Right, so these are some very good memes right here. We're getting to a little bit more on this, brothers and sisters. You know, just want to sum up and seal up right here because if we call ourselves prophets, right, and the, you know, how can you be called? A, how can you be a prophet and you don't know the scripture? Right, you gotta know the scripture. Right, and this is what we've been seeking to show and seeking to demonstrate right here, here, here. And yes, the the black people's connection. Right, these are our people. Right, right, the Israelites, right, these are our people. You got to learn the Hebrew, even the modern Hebrew, brothers. Brothers and sisters, learn the modern Hebrew is easy, man. We, this, is, this is how we rule, by learning these things and knowing these things, if you understand what we're saying. And then we also have our own, right, we can say original or paleo dialects, right? It's important for us to master it. The failure to master it, right, is like failure to be worthy to rule. Think about what I'm saying here. We master a lot of things. We've been over here in this North country for all these years, and because of a certain mastery, right, we was able to survive, right, and even at times, even thrive from time to time, right? That's why there's so much war against us as the children of Israel, right? Because they can't stop this resurrection. The resurrection is on, right? The resurrection is on, and we say Shalom to all of the groups, you know? But I think we said enough on this particular point, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers. We're going to seal this up because think about this for a moment. Even 2,000 years ago, when Yeshua HaMoshiach, according to the Berit Chadasha, the new, the new cover, the New Testament scriptures, right? Even when he showed up, there was only a few, a remnant, the Nazarenes, right? But later on over time, some more did, but still, you know, it would take us almost 2,000 years. Right? I just hope and pray it doesn't take another 2,000 years. So anyway, brothers and sisters, Shalom Habarim, Shalom. About to get ready for the podcast right now on the Ian and the Irish. Check out Rastafari Israelites. Right? Rastafari Israelites on the YouTube. That's one of the offerings we have right there, there, there. It has a podcast. You can call into the podcast. Save the number, 515-602. 9761 that's 515 602 9761 want to check out the the information society the intelligence society you know i mean this is like you know spiritual <laughs> you know social even military you know intelligence you know what i mean we need the intel all right because my people are destroyed they perish you know for lack of knowledge you know so Check us out, LOJS.org, LOJS.org. Give thanks to those, you know, who give, you know, the donations, the funding to help fund this work and these works here on these different platforms, because many of these platforms to offer, you know, this good news of the kingdom, of the King of Kings offering. You know, it does require certain, you know, funds and investment, and we put in everything that we have into this ministry, because this is, you know, this is this, this is our life. This, this is what it's about. This is the reality. This is what helps us to navigate you know you know this world flesh and satanic seclora you know to try you know from babylon you know what i mean to zion shalom chabarim shalom